I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Um, so we need to be very careful with the artificial intelligence. We are summoning the demon. Did you know most AI experts agree that computers will be equally as intelligent as humans by 2025? I talk and my words appear on the computer screen. They also expect computers to actually be smarter than us by 2050. We're reaching a critical point in computer power and it's not really a matter of if but when computers reach this stage. What will they think about us? Look around, what do you see? War, hate, disease, congenital birth defects, the possibility of nuclear extermination. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable on Earth, and I just ask, how would machines that are smarter than us deal with that? Terminator 2 is one of the best examples of a movie exploring and expanding upon these ideas. Let's talk about that opening scene. It's a great example on how to start your movie, and I don't think enough people talk about it. And when they do, they skip the first images that we actually see. An average day in Los Angeles. People standing in traffic, and children play without a care in the world. Their innocent voices are the last thing we hear before we cut to the apocalyptic future. This works so well, because it shows the contrast between two worlds that are so different, but are really the same. This is one of my favorite shots in the opening credits. James Cameron always called these the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The music intensifies, and we slowly start to realize that this perfect killing machine was created by none other than humans. This is one of the central themes in the movie. Technology doesn't have morality, it's only how we use it that gives it morality. So the T-800 can't have morality because it's a machine. So why would it even bother itself with putting on sunglasses in the middle of the night? There's actually a good reason for this. The sunglasses are what's called the dehumanizing element. When the T-800 wears them, he's just a killer with a blank mind. But the film progresses and the T-800 ends up becoming the good guy of the movie. So he eventually loses the glasses when he does his first good deed, rescuing Sarah from the mental hospital. Come with me if you want to live. To further prove this point, we actually never see the T-800 kill anybody in the movie. Cameron knew this and used it to his advantage. He knew it would be much easier for the audience to relate to the T-800 if he never killed anyone. Now you gotta promise me you're not gonna kill anyone, right? Right. T-2 also has some prime cinematography. Yes, the movie looks blue, like a lot of Cameron's movies, but there's something more to it here. The first time we see the T-800, this is the lighting used. This makes the T-800 look like a machine with no morals. Also, whenever Sarah is a total bitch towards John, this is the lighting we see. I didn't need your help, I can take care of myself. But the best use of cinematography comes when our characters reach the steel mill. The T-800 already lost almost half of the skin on his face. Hasta la vista, baby. On the left side is mostly a warmer color, which symbolizes humanity as it becomes closer to the human character. The use of mostly these two colors in the film, warm and cold, symbolizes humanity versus machines. Are you the legal guardian of John Connor? How can we distinguish a machine from us? The T-800 and T-1000 both look and act human. Sweat, bad breath, everything. Very hard to spot. So how can we tell? The answer lies in morality. Part of what makes us human is that all of us have a moral code. John Connor knows it's not right to kill people, but fails to explain it to the T-800. You just can't go around killing people. Why? What do you mean, why? Because you can't. Why? 
but this is what makes his character so damn interesting. It's this perfect killing machine that feels nothing, not even pity or remorse, that has to learn why killing is wrong. It's the T-800 that experiences the biggest arc. That's great, see you're getting it. But the yin and yang tells us that opposite forces give rise to each other. So we also have to deal with Sarah Connor constantly losing her shit throughout most of the movie. People often make the mistake of thinking Sarah is a hero, even a role model for women. Nope. She's just a regular person that after being put to huge pressure, becomes twisted. So as a T-800 learns how to be human, Sarah kind of forgets how to be. So when they get to the ranch, we see a huge expansion of this theme. The T-800 and John bond over fixing a truck, and it even becomes a really cool father figure to him. He learns the ins and outs of being human. But in the meantime, let's just say Sarah isn't making any progress. When she wakes up, she decides she wants to kill Miles Dyson, who granted is pretty much directly responsible for the end of the world, but he doesn't even know it yet. The sunglasses, the military outfit, single purpose in life is to kill some guy she doesn't even know, seem familiar? So many things mirror the first Terminator movie here. The blank stare, the red dot on Dyson's back, remind us of when she was the one to be terminated. The machines decided they can change their present by killing Sarah in the past for something she hadn't even done yet. <laughs> You're talking about things that I haven't done yet in the past tense. It's driving me crazy. And now Sarah decides she wants to kill someone in the present to prevent the future. Just like Sarah in the first movie, Miles Tyson seems like a pretty nice person. Fortunately, she doesn't go through with it. Shut up, shut up! It's all your fault! As any great ending to a story, it closes the cycle that began in the first movie. The T-800 finally understands tears, but also happiness. He learns the value of life, even as he must lose his own. I know now why you cry. But it's something I can never do. A machine created to kill humans gives up his own life to save the very humans he used to kill in a future that will never exist. As she did in the first movie, Sarah kills the T-800 by the push of a button. But where she felt relief, she now feels grief. Terminator 2 is still one of the best action movies ever made. It was a very important movie for breakthroughs in visual effects, using CGI, miniatures, animatronics, makeup, and models. It used pretty much every trick in the book to make the movie as believable as possible. But at its core, the first two Terminator movies are about the characters. There's just so many moments that resonate because of the emotional attachment we have with them. They stand out because it's never about the special effects. They are always used to enhance the story and the characters. So what is Terminator 2 trying to tell us? It's not a cautionary story about technology, but it's a movie that warns us of the dependence on it. It warns us not to skip time with each other because we are too distracted with the inventions of our time. Judgment Day didn't happen because of the technological advances. It happened because we gave up on our ability to make choices and because we let Skynet be in charge. Richard Feynman once said, To every man is given the key to the gates of heaven. The same key opens the gates of hell. And so it is with science. The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope. Because if a machine, a Terminator, can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too.